everyone! I went through kind of a ridiculous graphic novel reading spree earlier this month and because of that I have a little bit of an obscene uh, number of books to review so I'm actually going to break the recap videos up into two parts this month um, starting with I'm going to do my graphic novels recap now and then I'll recap everything else um, at the end of the month like I normally would. So this month the first graphic novel that I read was Zahara's Paradise by Amir and Khalil. Uh, this book I gave four and a half out of five stars. Zara's Paradise is a historical fiction of sorts. Uh, it's about a boy who goes missing during the student protests following the 2009 Iranian presidential elections. The boy's mother and his brother who go in search of him and um, go through as many channels as they can to find him. It's a very amazing story, um, very well drawn. Uh, it is very emotional. I actually had to stop reading it a couple times and kind of take a break and process what I had read. So just if you're interested in reading this one at all, just be prepared for a very emotional journey. The next thing that I read was Three Shadows by Cyril Pedrosa. Um, it was a really awesome book. Again, a kind of emotional book once you get towards the end of it. It's about a little boy who sees these three shadows out on the hilltop outside his family's home and um, his mother and his father come to the conclusion that these shadows are coming for their son, that they're basically an embodiment of death of sorts. Um, and his parents do everything within their power to protect him throughout the course of the story. I gave Three Shadows three out of five stars. Uh, it's got good artwork, got a good story, but it's just not something I would really probably ever pick up again. After Three Shadows, I went a little crazy and uh, kind of read five books over the span of about two and a half, maybe three days. I read Scott Pilgrim 2, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Scott Pilgrim 3, Scott Pilgrim and the Infinite Sadness. Number four, Scott Pilgrim gets it together. Number five, Scott Pilgrim vs. the Universe. And number six, Scott Pilgrim's Finest Hour. Uh, yes, basically I just finished up the Scott Pilgrim series. These books follow Scott Pilgrim on his quest to defeat the seven evil exes of his girlfriend Ramona Flowers. Uh, like I said before, the first book kind of was a very very close to certain parts of the movie however the last five books deviate from that quite a bit. I actually really enjoy them because there's a lot more backstory to a lot of the characters. Um, specifically Kim Pine, I really like her backstory. She's the drummer in um, Sex by Bomb, the band that some of the characters are in. Um, I, there's so much awesome character development in these stories that you don't see in the movie um, that definitely make it worth checking out the books. The artwork is amazing. It's kind of a crossover between manga and video gaming and just super fun. The f stories are really funny. Uh, I kept laughing continuously while I was reading them and I'm not usually a person who laughs out loud while I'm reading a story. So these books I definitely gave 5 out of 5 stars. I am looking forward to reading them again. I absolutely adored them. After Scott Pilgrim things took a little bit darker turn. I read Echoes by Joshua Hale Filkov. Filkov. Um, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars as well. I really enjoyed the story although it is quite terrifying. Um, it's about a man named Brian who is diagnosed schizophrenic. Um, he's actually getting treatment for it. At the beginning of the story his father is in the hospital dying of Alzheimer's and uh, confesses to his son on his deathbed that he had committed some serial murders uh, when he was younger and this sends Brian on a spiral with his schizophrenia through his mind just keeps going to all these really dark places wondering if he's just like his father, if he's going to start going on these kind of killing sprees since he got his schizophrenia from his father and they obviously share a lot of the same genetics. This is the first time I've ever actually been legitimately scared by a graphic novel and it's probably to me at least a lot scarier than a lot of popular horror fiction that is out right now. Um, really fantastic book. I highly 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 recommend this. It is awesome. I don't even know if this is going to fit in the frame, but after Echoes I read In the Shadow of No Towers by Art Spiegelman. Yep, totally doesn't fit. There you go. You can kind of see it. And there you can see the title thing. Um, this book, like I said, is by Art Spiegelman, who is best known for creating the two mouse graphic novels. It's basically um, Art Spiegelman's own personal process of dealing with the events. Um, he lived really close to Ground Zero and his daughter actually went to school um, right next to the World Trade Center. 
There's also a little bit of history in this book about comics in and their origins, how they started running in uh, Sunday papers and um, some stuff like that. And there's also, outside of the written history, there's also a few pages of old classic comics, which are kind of cool to get to look at. Overall, I gave In the Shadow of No Towers 3 out of 5 stars. Definitely had some very unique insights, and as always, Arts B. Bowen's work is fantastic. The last book I read this month was The Arrival by Sean Tan. It's a really awesome picture on it. I don't know if you can technically said that I, I read this. Um, this graphic novel has absolutely no text in it. A lot of beautiful, amazing artwork, but no text. The artwork in this book is amazing. It's a really interesting com combination of realism and surrealism. It's the story of a man who leaves his wife and daughter to go to another country to find work and eventually um, is able to bring them over to live with him. It's definitely a, a weird story to get into um, because of the fact that there are that there is no text. It takes a little bit of getting used to reading this type of graphic novel, although it is really, really wonderful. I think I actually gave this book four out of five stars. Uh, like I said, there's no text in it, so it's a little difficult to understand, but I did really enjoy it. So those are the graphic novels I've read so far in April. I should be doing another video at the beginning of May about the rest of the stuff that I read in April. Um, if you have any questions before then, you can leave me a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you guys later.